During our first winter on the ship, we experienced some big storms. Two of them were really heavy, with 10 and 12 before. Join us aboard when the first big storm arrives and we are not allowed to leave our unprotected landing stage. Hello, it's so good to see you again. Before we start with today's video, we want to take a moment to thank you all. It was really amazing for us to see that you are so interested in the story of the ship and in this project and we are truly grateful for all the encouraging comments and tips. We are so overwhelmed how many of you immediately subscribed to this channel and we still can't really believe it. So a massive thank you to all of you. Now I'm going back to my voiceover booth. <sighs> now it's better. Just to give you an overview what this channel is all about. We bought this massive steel trawler, which once was a tall ship. On the long run, we plan to convert her back into a topsail schooner. The time frame for that will be 5 to 10 years. So we are in for a long journey. But we already use this ship as our home. So you can expect videos about projects, about traveling, and about living on a floating refit. Now let's take a short walk to the place where we spent the winter. This was the berth of our boat when we bought it. It's a really nice berth. It is quiet, you don't have a lot of other boats around you, you can enjoy nature. As you see, there is no electricity or water supply but we have solar power and a big water tank. Therefore, it was no problem for us. The only real issue is that it's not a protected harbor. If the wind is coming from this direction or that side, you get a lot of swell and the boat gets pushed on the jetty. When the first big storm was announced with 55 knots, we were worried. We picked up more fenders at the chandlery and tried to make our boat as stormproof as possible. We were quite new in the liverboard business and hoped that we had done enough to protect our boat from severe damage. So why didn't we seek shelter? That harbour is only one nautical mile away and the one over there is even closer. We really wanted to go into the harbour. This is our radio. A Sailor RT-144, for all the Technic fans around us. It is an old but robust radio and it works perfectly fine. However, to us it was useless. When we bought the ship and did all the paperwork, we asked how to register the radio. The broker told us no need to rush. It only takes a day. And that's completely true. However, you have to register your radio communication license. And that takes eight weeks. Eight weeks. Nobody knew that before. And there is no way to speed up the process. We have a big ship and radio is mandatory. So we were detained for two long months. Without the radio, there was no way to move the boat. And suddenly, the nice, quiet berth wasn't that nice after all. Especially when the first big storm arrived. The clouds scattered, the wind picked up, the big, heavy raindrops stopped to fall, the sea rose high. We stood in the wheelhouse, half scared, half fascinated by the immense power of nature. The wind was hauling, the waves pushed the boat violently against the jetty. You could feel each wave running through.
the water level rose and the landing stage was more underwater than above. And some of our fenders swam so high that they were pushed above the jetty and were useless. Luckily, we added some extra fenders. The storm went on like this for the whole day, with some interruptions where we relaxed and thought it was over. Just to start even more forceful again. We regularly checked the fenders and mooring lines. And as the storm continued throughout the night, the whole boat was constantly rolling and shaking. So we didn't get much sleep. And it wasn't until the very next evening before the wind dropped. And after a last check on the lines and fenders, exhausted from the storm, we fell asleep. Luckily, nothing broke. The fenders stayed where they should be and saved the ship. But after this experience, it was absolutely clear for us that we didn't want to spend the next storm at this place. We wanted to be at a more sheltered place when the next storm arrived. and soon after the next storm was announced. Luckily our radio license finally arrived, so it was time to install the radio. And move into a safe harbor. As this was our first docking in a harbor, we inspected it first. The harbor was big and it should be an easy approach. However, when we arrived with the ship, the harbor started to shrink. And when we entered it, the boat grew some extra meters. It was thrilling, but everything went fine and we moved for the upcoming storm. If you enjoyed this one nautical mile long crossing more than we did, then leave a like. Because the bunnies would really appreciate it. It was a bit exhausting for them as well. After the long time on the exposed jetty, it is fantastic to be finally in a protected harbour. It feels safe, the boat barely moves, and it is really great to have other people around after the long time of isolation on the empty dock. However, before we could enjoy the hospitality of the harbour, we had to prepare everything for the big storm. Wind Force 12. As described in the Barford scale, the air is filled with foam and spray. Sea is completely white with driving spray. Visibility is very seriously affected. On land, it leaves devastation. For my American friends, that is a full-blown hurricane. We were really glad to be in the protected harbour during the storm. Nothing happened to our boat, but there were some smaller boats that were pushed into the jetty and had some damage.
And that's it for this video. Next week we will start with some smaller projects and quite soon we will do the often requested boat tour. For that we would really like to know what details and things you are interested in. Let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.